Hi. Um, this week in the news, something that we witness a great deal is Prime Minister Harper visit to Israel. And it's been covered, there's many stories. Uh, we might like or dislike what um, Prime Minister H Harper has said in front of the Knesset, the uh, Parliament of Israel. And it, I guess, like I said, we can like, we can dislike, and that's what we have election for. If we like what the government uh, have done, we elect that government. We did not. We do not like what the government did. We elect another government. So that's the joy of living in a democracy. We have the, the right to choose our governments. It is what caught my attention. Is something else. It's it's a part of this speech he gave, and I don't have the exact wording. So uh, sorry if I do not exactly got it, but. Still, the, the sense is was the association of a critic of the state of Israel is, is association with anti-Semitism. And Prime Minister Harper did not invent anything. This discourse is very present for those who were at uh, the last general council or was aware of what happened or work uh, and read the report on the Israel-Palestine situation and how the United Church of Canada uh, should pos position itself. Uh, this kind of language of seeing um, a critic of the state of Israel as anti-Semitism exists out there. And it's surprising. It, it, it's very unsettling. I will even say unsettling for most of us because maybe it's part of our DNA as United Church of Canada. We like to criticize, especially our government. Uh, a former moderator, uh, Peter Short, once says that many people in the United Church believe that it's their role and their duty to be the official opposition to the Canadian government. If the government said something, we're going to oppose government, will change its position, I'm sure we will still oppose. This is who we are. We're a bunch of activists. It's never enough, It's or it's too far. That's part of our DNA. Like it or not, this is who we are. So it's, it's strange to see, to be told that we cannot, or we should not, criticize a government. Because... And, and it makes me think, um, do, we, do, do we think it's, it's normal um, for, let's say, if we criticize the Canadian government? Are we unpatriotic? Are we bad Canadian? Or maybe there's, there's a part of the prophetic voice in the Hebrew Scripture, in the Old Testament, when the prophet went in front of their leaders and they said, you missed the mark. This is not what God intend for God's people. Please come back. And that's the part that we often forget about the prophets. This part of, please come back. Yes, there's a denunciation, but it's not like you're going to burn in hell for eternity. No, it's not too late. Because we still care about you. We still love you. Please come back. Please change your way. Please amend your way. Please do better, I beg you. And I think this is part of the prophetic voice that all of us are called, regardless of the position. I think we have this right, we have this duty to speak up when we see something that we don't feel that exactly what it's supposed to be. We have this right to speak. We have to be honest, we, we don't have to expect necessarily that everybody will listen to us. We need to remember that the prophets were, were not listened to and, and everybody seems to hate them. We, we just have to read the text. They have to flee the kings, the queens, the other uh, court officer wants to kill them and, and, and they lament to God, said, oh, nobody wants to listen to me. But still they did it. Still they did it. Still they speak up. And that would be maybe my, my answer to the Prime Minister, especially uh, during this trip when he's surrounded by those all those religious leaders. Let's say, what, what the Prophet would do in this situation? 
prophet would not necessarily take one side over the other. And maybe the prophet would say, enough of this. You know, maybe we're past the point of whose fault it is. Is it the Israelite fault? Is it the Palestinian fault? This conflict is as old as we are and is <laughs> so, much, so much complex that we'll never understand it. But what we need to remember, we still have the right to speak up and say, it's not supposed to be that way. I don't think God intended for God's people, regardless of our religious affiliation, to kill each other in the name of land, in the name of religion. I don't think that. I will never be convinced about that. Sorry. I believe God's called us to work for peace. And sometimes working for peace is to challenge every side. Honestly, it could be very uncomfortable. But I think we have the right to challenge. Government, of elected official, minister, clergy, one another on the workplace. We need to challenge one another. Because if we're not challenged, we'll never get better. We will never grow. I hope this week you will be able to speak up. Some, some have the gift to speak up very loud, very spectacular. Some are not gifted, but still, we can write a letter. We can say something to a colleague, say, well, I think that's out of line. I don't think it's very respectful. We have the choice not to repeat what something told us. We have the, the choice when it's time to election, to elect our government. We have, we have all those choices, what we buy or what we not buy. We have all those choices. Let us use those choices to be a prophetic voice, to challenge our world, and hopefully to create a better world. Take care of yourself. Try to remain warm. It's very cold outside. And take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.